I want to be whole. Do I have anybody that feel like that this morning? See, we, we, we look like we're whole and we know how to act like we're whole and we know how to give a perception that we're whole. But there's some of us that, bless God, that need to be whole. And, and I won't verbally tell anybody, I won't allow anybody to see that I'm not whole, but Lord, I'm crying in the inside, I'm yeah. crying in my spirit, and I'm crying in my heart, Lord, I want to be whole. Amen. Through things for a long time now, and I feel like he don't see me, and I feel like he's not hearing me, and I, I feel like there's no way out, and I feel like that there's nobody that can identify with where I am, but I come to tell you that Jesus already see you. Oh, my God. Do I have anybody that says I'm not ashamed to stand before men and say, Lord, I want to be whole. And so many times we are walking around and, and, and we look the part and we can act the part because we done rehearsed it over and over in our minds and we get in the mirror at home and say I gotta smile like this and I gotta carry myself like this and, and, and I gotta act like this but I come to tell you this morning there's so many people that are saying Lord I wanna be whole but where is the pool that I can get in to be made whole? Where is the place I can go to be made whole? Uh, church is not, uh, I'm sorry, and I may offend somebody, but church is not church anymore. There was a time we could come to church and, and all we had to do was walk in the door and prayer was going on. There was a time we could come into church on Sunday morning and, and before we even sat in a pew, we would bow down on our knees at the altar. And all we would do is just cry out, Jesus, I need to be made whole. And we would begin to cry out and there was a mother that would lay her hand on our back and say, daughter, you ain't got it yet. Where are the mothers that used to say, I I'll sit there with you and tarry until your change come. Where are those that are now in the church praying and saying, Lord, until we know breakthrough has happened, until we know that this daughter and this son has been made whole, I'm going to stay on my face before God and I'm going to cry out until God let me know that breakthrough has taken place, until he let me know that wholeness has hit the house. Where are the church this morning that used to say, God, for God, God I live and for God I die. Where is the church this morning that said I'm going to pray until I feel a release in the spirit. Not till I'm tired of my knees hurting. Not till my stomach is hurting. But I'm praying until I know without a shadow of a doubt that a release has hit the house. And so we find ourselves in Luke the fifth chapter, in John the fifth chapter. I'm sorry. And there's a man that's been in a place for a long time. And it says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews in the first verse. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And understand that Bethesda was seen as a house of mercy. It was seen as the place or the flowing water. And, and many a times we, we, we come into the church reaching and looking and searching for the flowing water. How many know that water is life? And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind folk, halt folk, withered folk, waiting for the moving of the water. Oh, God, have mercy. And so many times in the church we come in, we looking for somebody to look like they're withered. We looking for them to look like they're lame. But if I ain't limping, they assume that I'm not lame. But I come to tell you that there's some people that's leaping in there, that's limping in their emotions. There's some people that's lame in their affections. There's some people that's lame in their finances. There's somebody that's withered up in their love. There's somebody that's saying, God, I don't have everything that I need, but I'm coming to a place that I need the flowing water of the Spirit of God. Amen. 
Say, Lord, I'm coming to a place where I need mercy. I done learned now I can't take mercy for granted. So this time, God, I'm for real. I come with a sincere heart. I come with a broken and contrite spirit. I come, God, because I need you for real. I need you to impact and I need you to do something in my life like never before. And so, God, because I made this decision in my heart and in my mind, I'm coming to a place, God, where I need a flowing water. I don't need it to be stopped up by a whole bunch of stuff. I'm coming, God, because I need to feel the flow of the Spirit of God. I need to feel the flow of the Word of God. I need to feel the flow of the virtue of God because I learned that the virtue of God will go past the church building. The virtue of God will flow from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet and everything that the virtue touches concerning me. I know God will be able to make it whole. Is there anybody here today that says I'm coming to a place in my life where I need God to flow like never before. I'm not talking about in my finances but I need him to flow in my emotions. I need him to flow in my mind. I need him to flow in my heart because if he can get my heart right, I can love like never before. And I heard the word says that love covers a multitude. And if I can learn how to love right, I won't be worried about what it said about me. I won't be worried about what it looked like. If I can learn how to love right, I'll be able to do the things that God called me to do. And I'll set my affections on the thing of God. I'll look to the heat from with coming my help if I can get in a place with God that I can have the flow of the Holy Ghost and it won't leave me alone and I dare not turn it loose is there anybody this morning that says I just need to get in a place is there a place my God. So there are a great multitude and understand that in this place it probably was packed with people. And so there were people everywhere waiting for the move. Oh God. Waiting for the move of God. And see in that they were waiting on an angel. But I come to tell you in this season the angel is Jesus Christ. The angel is the spirit of God. And when you can get in that place where God, I'm waiting for you to move. I won't go to the left and I won't go to the right, but I'm going to stand still and wait for the move of God. And when God begin to move, there's nothing that can stop it. There's nothing that can block it. There's nothing that can get in the way of what God already promised that he's predestined for his children. And I heard him say in the word that healing is the children's bread. And if God promised me a heal and God have mercy. I can stand still and hold up my head and decree and declare that healing is my bread because I am the child of God and that that he promised he's going to fulfill. I just got to get some patience and let it take its perfect work and I know that in due season when God work it out because I love him it's going to work in my favor. It's going to turn around in my favor. It's going to work for my good. It's going to produce that that God put on the inside. I heard him say that he who began a good work, he will finish it. He's going to complete that that he started in me. And if healing is a part of that, I know God is going to do it. Do I have anybody that says I know God is going to do it? And if you don't I'm gonna hold on to the bloodstained banner and I'm gonna give you glory in the midst of it. I'm gonna give you praise because of it. I'm gonna magnify you because you're worthy. Come on and bless God. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I feel a trouble. I feel a trouble. And it says, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Yeah. And there's some of us that if we really 
would start to be honest with ourselves. We've been struggling with something for a very long time. And see, I done gave the perception for so long that I'm delivered, but I want you to know that I'm still struggling. I come to tell you it's all right. If you're struggling, because Jesus said there's a troubling that's about to hit your house. There's a troubling that's about to hit your spirit. I'm not talking about your physical house today. I'm talking about this house. I'm talking about this house that houses the spirit of God. See, there's a supernatural troubling that's about to take place. And we think God shook us the first time. But good God have mercy. There's a troubling that's about to hit the people of God. And when the trouble begins to hit. You're going to feel something that you never felt before. You're going to see things that you've never seen before. You're going to go through some stuff that you never went through before. But because Jesus is the causing of the trouble, he said, don't fret because I already got it. Don't you know if I let you get in the boat, I'm going to take you across to the other side. You might feel some troubling in the water, but just because the storms begin to rage, and the seas begin to move. You ought to know that I'm on the boat with you. And because I reside on the inside, good God have mercy. There is nothing that can take you from me. There is nothing that can all set your course. Because I'm the one that's God in the boat. I know it seems hard. It looks like you're going to and fro. But because Jesus is in the boat, you ought to already know the water will overtake me. The boat can't overthrow me because Jesus is piloting my boat. You ought to tell somebody, Jesus is piloting my boat. I know it looks trouble right now. I know it looks like I'm not going to make it. It looks like I'm being overthrown. But I come to tell you that Jesus, he got my boat. Don't you worry about what I look like today because I may look like I'm overtaken. I may I'm not going to make it, but I come to tell you that as long as the blood of Jesus is covering me, nothing will penetrate the blood of Jesus. You ought to bless God. So, one thing we must understand that Jesus didn't just know that this man was suffering. He didn't just come into the knowledge of this man's suffering. Saying that to let you know, Jesus already know what you're going through. He know it when you started going through it. So he didn't just know this man had been suffering for 38 years. But I believe they had to point it out so that we the people can understand that you may be going through for a long time, but to everything there is a season. Good God have mercy. And this season of suffering is about over because the afflictions are brought for a little while. But I heard the word say that my God shall deliver us out of them all. Is there anybody that believed that God is about to deliver me out of it all? Not just a part of it, not just this side of it, but he He's about to deliver me out of it all. That includes my mind. That includes my heart. That includes my spirit. That includes my finances. That includes my children. That includes my household. That includes everything that pertains to me. Because he said, I, God, will deliver you out of them all. I don't know about you, but I'm a little selfish in this season. He said that he'll deliver me out of everything that I'm going through. And guess what, y'all? He didn't put a stipulation on it. He didn't say if you got yourself in it. He didn't say because I allowed you to go through it. He said, I'm going to deliver you out of it all. Whether you did it, whether it was for your purpose, or whatever the cause was. He said, I'm going to deliver you out of it all. <laughs> Somebody ought to be shouting right there. Because we done got ourselves in some stuff. That we know except for God. He says in verse 6, when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, listen, Jesus is talking 
to the man. Somebody say, Jesus, talk to me. I need you to talk to me. Because if you don't talk to me, good God have mercy. He says, listen, wilt thou be made whole? After 38 years. Well, you can just take a moment and say, Lord, how long have mine been? Just think about how long you've been going through. Some of us ain't even at 30 years or 20 years, but God, Jesus say, after 38 years. Somebody said, I just started going through this two months ago. But if he can do it for a man that's been going through for 30 years, eight years. Good God have mercy. How much more? Oh God. It won't take him long because you just been there for two months. But how many know that he said, wait a minute. I know you've been in it for two months. I know you've been there for two years. I know you've been there for 20 years. But he said, this man been there for 38 years. And now I have come because his season is at hand. His due season is at hand. And I'm coming to deliver him in his season. And you ought to see sit there and say, God, I know that in my due season, you're going to deliver me. Not just deliver me, God, but you're going to make me whole. You're going to make me whole. That means there's nothing left undone. There's no open space anywhere. There's nothing, there's no gap in anything. There's no lack of slack in any part. There's nothing about you that's going on that God hadn't predestined to take place. Everything is working according to the purpose of God. He said, you are made whole say wilt thou be made whole do you want it this morning <laughs> God that ain't nobody say nothing do you want it this morning you see see one thing I, I realized about this text is understand there was a multitude of people and Jesus went to this man and he spoke to the man. But there's a multitude of people. But he went to this man. Everybody ain't in this right now. He went to this man. And he said, will thou understand, will you? He didn't say the rest of y'all, but I'm here to tell you, if he speak it in the atmosphere, good God have mercy. I'm going to lift up my hands and my heart, and I'm going to say, God, you're no respect the person. Give God back his word. If he speak it, good God have mercy. God, you said, he said, will thou be made whole? And as he spoke to the man, good God have mercy. No doubt the multitude was probably looking because everybody understood and everybody could not get made whole in the pool. It was whoever stepped in first. Oh God. Oh, can y'all see that? Listen, there was a great crowd of people. And can you imagine who's going to say who got there first? But one thing I like about Jesus is he can talk to the man. But God is so big that if he speaks something over the man, God have mercy. He can say, okay, I'm talking to the man. But if you in the atmosphere in the vicinity of what I'm saying, and you can catch it in your heart, even though I'm speaking to the man, if you need a healing, you ought to open up yourself and begin to say, God, I need that healing. You ought to open up your heart and begin to say, God, I need that right there. God, I need that breakthrough. God, I need that deliverance. Because God is no respect the person And if he said it He's not going to go back on his word His word is sure and very sure and, and if he said it That means you can have it Open up your mouth And begin to tell God You said God You said God You said God The word shall not come back void So you ought to know that God if you said it I just got to wait in expectation If you heal this man here I know my healing is is on the way. If you deliver this sister here, then I know my deliverance is on the way. If you got a breakthrough in that household, God, I know breakthrough is coming in mind. I'm walking in the door speaking breakthrough. God, you're gonna do it. Breakthrough in my house. Breakthrough in every part of my life. Come on and bless God. Will thou be made whole? the important man answered. 
answer. Yes, sir. Understand he's impotent. Mm -hmm. That means he's impotent. Amen. There's something that's keeping him from being whole. Amen. There's something that's paralyzing a part of his life. He, he, he can't move one side of his body from what I understand. And, and because he's paralyzed on one side, he's looked at as being disabled. <laughs> Y'all to catch that. He's looked at as being disabled or he's crippled. <laughs> Some of us got a crippling that people can't see. But he's crippled. And he says, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, mm, another step it down before me. Say, I'm crippled, Lord. They know I'm paralyzed on one side. And everybody know what's going on with me. They know I'm having trouble with my children. They know I'm going through in my finances. They know my health is failing. And every time I try to get up to the line, God, somebody get in the seat before me. Somebody take up all their time. And now I don't, and because I don't have a ride, I gotta ride with other people. I can't stand in line and wait. But I'm saying to you, God, I know I'm crippled. I know I might feel like I'm disabled. I know I got all the odds stacked up against me. But I dare to tell you this morning that even though you're still on the side of the pool, there's going to come a time when Jesus is going to come speak to you and say, will thou be made whole? I don't have to worry about somebody coming to put me in. I know Jesus is going to make his way to me. If I just lay there and bleed, be like blind by the mares, I'm going to yell until Jesus hear me. I'm going to stay in the same place. Every day they open up the pool, I'm going to come lay right here because I'm impotent and I can't put myself in. But I heard Jesus' arm is not too short, neither is his ear too heavy. But I know a Jesus that said he'll meet me right where I am. And if I just stay here and holler until he hear me, I'm going to keep saying Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my deliverer. Jesus, my savior. Jesus, my way maker. I'm going to keep yelling until Jesus hear me. And Jesus going to make his way. Good God have mercy to where I am. I heard him say he'll meet me at my point of need. And if I'm in need, I know Jesus will meet me Amen. right there. So they can trouble that water all they want <laughs> to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step down before me, Jesus said unto him. Ooh. Jesus said unto him. Listen, this is Jesus talking. Rise, take up thy bed, <laughs> and walk. Rise. L listen, listen. See, see, see. Some people just call take it up and walk. But before you can take up the bed, you gotta rise up. Oh God, have mercy. You gotta rise up. He said, just stand up in it. Just stand up in it. You ought to just say, you know what, forget about that. I'm going to stand up in it. I'm going to stand up in it. Because Jesus said, rise. And we still sin. Jesus said, rise. Do you not have a need this morning? Jesus said, rise. Because you have a need, you ought to be rising up in here. And you not only rise in your standard, but rise in your praise. Rise in your worship. Rise in giving God what we owe him. Can you rise up in that while you're yet in the midst of the multitude? While you're yet still thinking that you're disabled? You still thinking you crippled? Remember, the man couldn't get up. But Jesus spoke a word and said, rise. In other words, when you thought you were lame, Jesus said, I'm telling you to rise up. And at the word of God, he began to rise. When Jesus spoke a word, he rose up. When Jesus said, rise, take up thy bed, where he didn't have strength to even put himself in a pool, Jesus told him to take up a whole bed. Oh, God have mercy. Take up that thing and walk with it. Tell him, I know it hurts sometimes, but walk with it. I know it don't feel good, but you ought to walk 
with it. You ought to rise up and keep walking. God gonna give me strength in every limb. He gonna make sure my legs are strong enough to rise. Not only rise, but I'm gonna hold my bed and I'm gonna walk with it. Why? Because Jesus said, it's my time to rise. You ought to give God some glory. You ought to look at somebody and tell them it's your time. It's my time to rise. It's my time to rise. And the very bed you were laying on, pick it up and walk with it. Woo! And see, let me tell you something. See, I think, I believe the man walked with confidence. Oh, God. I believe he began to walk and say, you might see my bed, but that's my testimony. I laid on this bed for a long time. I stood here and I laid on it and people saw me laying in it. People talked about me laying in it. People, did, people talked about me and they walked over me. People stepped across me while I was laying on this very bed. Don't look at your bed as something bad. Your bed is your testimony. Begin to tell people this bed is where I came from. This bed is what got me here today. This bed is what allowed Jesus to come and speak to me. This bed is what got my deliverance. This bed is what got my healing. This bed is a part of me. This bed is what I tell people when they think I've been here all the time. This bed is where I tell people God is my deliverer. This bed is where God get the glory out of my life. This bed says immediately the man was made whole immediately the man was made whole and we're standing all over the building the man immediately was made whole somebody gotta catch that immediately 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 the man had faith in what jesus said and immediately he was made whole there's somebody here today I'm speaking, decreeing, and declaring that if you would just rise up according to the word of God and take up your bed immediately some things are going to be made whole for you. Immediately some things are going to begin to happen. Immediately healing. Immediately deliverance. Immediately salvation. Immediately breakthrough. Come on. Come on. Lift up your hands and say Lord you said I rise. Take up my bed and walk and so because God you said rise take up my bed and walk I'm doing that today I decree and declare today that I shall rise and take up my bed and walk and because he said it I'm gonna believe it and at this moment I'm gonna begin to walk I'm walking in what God said I can walk in I'm decreeing that I'm whole I'm decreeing that I'm whole today immediately God I'm whole immediately I'm whole immediately I'm whole immediately I'm whole according to the word of God I'm taking it up God and I'm walking with it. Come on, you ought to bless him. I'm taking it up. I'm taking it up. I have faith to believe God in what he said. I got faith in the word of God that if he said it, I can have it. If he said it, he's going to do it. Come on, rise. Take up that bed. Come on, don't be ashamed of the bed any longer. That's your testimony of how God healed you. That's the testimony of how he delivered you. Come on. Come on. Come on. He's worthy this morning. Yes, he is. He's worthy. God, we decree and declare your word. For you said it shall not come back void. The healing, oh God, is the children's grave. And so we decree and declare healing over your people this morning. In every area of their life, that they will be made whole, God. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing, God. In Jesus' name. We give you praise. Come on and bless him. Come on.